this is Alchemy Kitchen, and in this episode we're going to be making a juicy lucifer on cast iron over an open fire. So the first step is, once you've got your cut of meat, to prepare it for the grinder. Basically we're just going to be cutting it into smaller sections that are more manageable to fit into the meat grinder. I'm using a top loin roast, boneless roast. Basically this is the best thing I found in my freezer that um, has some fat in it because you want a nice fat to meat ratio in your cut. Chuck steak works really good for that as well. You don't want to use something like um, prime rib or something where there's no fat and it's going to come out really dry for hamburger. So. Uh, it's pretty thawed, not totally thawed. I'm gonna just cut it into manageable pieces. And now from here, about an inch again. When you have them cut small like this, it goes through the meat grinder a lot faster and less chance of the friction heating up the meat and turning it into mush. It's done. Now I'm going to put this in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Uh, just basically, I don't want to freeze it, I just want the outside to be a bit kind of firm. Again, that's good. When you have it a little bit cooled down like that, it's going to work a lot better in the meat grinder. It's not going to turn into this paste, this pink paste. You want it to grind out nicely. So we'll go ahead and throw that into the freezer and get the meat grinder set up next. So when setting up your meat grinder, um, usually they're going to come with different size blades. I'm going to start, I'm going to do two passes with this meat through the grinder. I'm going to start with the big size blade and then go to the smaller one. Um, if you don't have a meat grinder, you can get them in a very, uh, the range and price can vary a lot. Um, I'll put a couple links below to a few of them. I mean, you can get a hand grinder as well. Uh, if you're getting an electric grinder, check out the reviews on them. That's what I did. For tomatoes, I'm just taking what I got. It happens to be Roma tomatoes. Cut it in thin slices. And what I like to do is season them. Basically, a bit of salt. Some black pepper. And a little bit of oregano, dried oregano. Well, that meat's in the freezer for 20 minutes. I got my prep work done. I did the tomatoes already. Chopped up some iceberg lettuce, some red onion, and some white onion, thin slices. Um, here, I chopped up, finally chopped up a jalapeno and a red chili pepper that I smoked, and some garlic that I smoked. I keep the garlic separate because I'm gonna throw that in after. I'm gonna sweat these chilies out a little bit in a pan give them a quick saute, because this is going to go inside the burger. And I'll put the garlic in a little later, because that can burn easier. Um, I've also got the cheese prepared. I'm using a half and half mix of cold smoked pepper jack and cold smoked cheddar. Uh, created it. And to use these cold smoked ingredients, if you want to do that, check out my video. I'll put it in the info box above on how to make a cold smoke generator and how to smoke this kind of stuff these ingredients all right so the next step is to uh give this a quick uh, saute and then we're going to start grinding them okay so in a preheated cast iron skillet uh, i'm gonna go ahead and start sauteing these chilies the jalapeno and chili pepper i got it on a low heat with a, just a little bit of olive oil in there chili in first I don't have to cook these thoroughly, I just want to kind of soften them up a bit to get some of the flavor to come out, but also it's going to be in the middle of the 
the burgers, so it's not gonna come out too raw. Yeah, a little bit nicer texture. Got my chili sauteed and threw in the garlic for another minute. Turn off the heat and that's good. Um, already a really good aroma. Uh, you can really smell the smoke flavor from cold smoking those chilies and the garlic. So now we're ready to start grinding the meat. Um, like I said, I'm going to pass through the bigger blade first and then do a second pass through a smaller blade. So we'll do the first one right now. So See, it's pretty coarse still, so that's why we're going to take a second run through it with a finer blade. So we'll go ahead and switch that blade out. And we're going to go ahead and put our smaller blade on. Now, one thing with the meat grinder is they can seem like they're a bit of a pain in the ass to clean. You want to clean them very thoroughly every time you're done. Best trick I can give you tip for cleaning a meat grinder I forgot. is don't wait. Clean it as soon as possible. It makes it a hundred times easier. So what I'm going to do is that blade I already used, I already just throw that in the sink to soak. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to clean it all immediately. Another tip, uh, when you're putting your meat in, just go in small portions so you don't wear out your motor. It's going to work a lot better. Less, um, the less it has to work so hard and get stuck in there, the less friction, the less heat problems you're going to have. And you want to make sure the meat is still cold. It's cold to the touch. That's very important so it doesn't come out like a pink paste, which is not going to taste so good. Alright, so we're ready for the second run. And there we go. Now we're ready to start forming these into burgers. We're going to make these juicy lucifers, so I'll show you how to do that next. So now that our meat's prepared, now we're ready to form it into patties. Um, so for that, I'm just gonna take the whole thing. This is the way I like to do it, to get them approximately to equal size. And it helps to wet your hands first, too, if you have a problem with the meat sticking to your hands. So I'll form one ball, and do not pack it tight. That's a common mistake people do. They start like kneading it like dough and packing it really tight. If you do that, the consistency is going to be more like a meatloaf. It's not going to be as juicy. So I just make a form an easy ball, and from here, I'm just going to try to like make two, about as close as I can to the equal size, like that. And I'll keep doing that. I'm going to split them in half and try to get them as close as I can to equal size. Now from here, you just go until you're at the size you want for your burger. Um, what I'm gonna actually do with these is we make two patties that get pressed together and that's where we stuff them inside. So. If they're huge like this, it's gonna be a really big burger. Um, I could probably go half of each of these. 
So um, once again, I'm gonna break them into half, about equal size. Now I'm at a shape I'm, I like working with. This is about a little bit bigger than golf ball size. What we're gonna do is form the first patty. And to do that's real easy. You don't need any things fancy unless you're like really OCD about the shape. Just smash it down. And what I'm gonna do is use my hand like this to kind of keep the edges. I wanna get like as, I wanna keep the thickness uniform. That's the biggest thing. So I have parts that are thicker than others they are not gonna cook as equal. And I'm gonna get it pretty thin actually because I'm putting two of these together. As I push it out, spread it out, I'm gonna just keep working the edges like that to get a nice round edge that's not gonna crumble apart. All right, so now we're ready to stuff these. Let me grab the cheese and also my sauteed chili peppers, jalapeno, garlic. So for two, I'm gonna just split this in half. Roughly, put it right smack in the center, and now a nice mix of this pepper jack and the smoked cheddar, nice mountain right in the middle like that. Try to keep it from the edges as much as possible, make more of a mountain. Now we just take that other patty, fix the holes. Lay it right over and start working it together around the edges. Now we can go ahead and season it. Uh, I'm going to use some black pepper. And since I, you can season the meat as you're putting it through the uh, meat grinder, this works fine for me though. I like it this way. So since I didn't season the meat before, I'll put a healthy amount of seasoning on the outside. So we'll do some salt and pepper is all you need really, but you can put some garlic powder and you can put whatever you want. So now a bit of, I'm gonna use the smoked kosher salt. Add it in there, flip it and repeat. And there we go. So now it's time for me to just finish off this next one and then start up the grill.
works right over the heat source cover them and try to bring the inside around I I like it around 136 degrees internal out sort of like a medium rare So after a quick sear on the cast iron skillet, we put these over indirect heat for a good 15 minutes or so on each side. Uh, you can see just a little bit of the cheese is leaking out. The sear really helps to keep it in. And I'm toasting up some onion rolls for buns right now. And now we're ready to take them off the grill and put them